Hello everybody. I hope you're all very well wherever you happen to be on planet Earth this evening. Welcome to episode 7 of Songs and Stories with me, James Hendry, and my wife, Kirsten Ann, who is sitting behind the camera today. Say hello, Kirsten. Your audio sounds nice. My audio sounds nice. Oh, that's good. Now, um, before I start, I must just say a few things about Badgerin Mountain. This evening we are trying the white blend, which is called the White Cape Blend. Yes, and it has got 38% Chenin Blanc, 32% Viognier. I really like Viognier, unsophisticated though my palate is. 15% Grenache Blanc, 15% Sauvignon Blanc, and it has been aged for a year in oak. I think it's delicious. Here it is. I'm now going to drink some. Then the other thing I must note, uh, some of you will know this, but um, this shirt has a, a relatively <clears throat> amusing story around it. And the uh, amusing thing is that I wore it for a TV interview that I did on SABC2, which is the, was it SABC2 or 3? Doesn't matter. The Expresso Show, which is the morning show, kind of morning TV here. And I went on to do a little bit of an interview about Safari Live, and I wore this shirt. And as my parents, friends, anyone who knew me, including a lot of you, Judy H. notably, pointed out my belly button appeared midway through the interview and remained then for the rest of the interview, which I think sort of detracted slightly from the class of what was said. So that's the story behind this shirt. All right, let's start with the song. This song probably needs very little introduction. I'm not entirely sure what it's about, but it's an extremely famous song by an extremely famous New York musician, uh, one of my favorites, and this might be his most favorite song, or most famous song, and I learned it, uh, or certainly I heard it many years back from an LP that my mother had, and I used to, my parents had a collection of LPs, it wasn't a massive collection, but they had this collection of LPs, and one of them was this album by Simon and Garfunkel, <clears throat> and interestingly, when it was recorded, the song is The Sound of Silence, by the way. When it was recorded, it was just recorded with Simon Garfunkel and a guitar. And if you hear it on the album, there's a band from the second verse. And apparently that was all added afterwards. Uh, I'm not sh and it's very seldom actually sung with a band these days by Paul Simon. Many people have covered it, including most recently, I think, Disturbed, which is, I think, as far as I'm aware, a fairly um, heavy death metal band. So a strange choice for them, but they did a magnificent version of it. And I'm going to do a sort of hybrid. Okay, here we go. First song of the evening. The Sound of Silence. <clears throat> darkness, my old friend I've come to talk with you again Because the vision softly in creeping Left its seeds while I was sleeping And the vision 
that was planted in my brain still remains within the sounds of silence in restless dreams I walked alone narrow streets of cobblestone Halo of a street lamp I turn my collar to the cold and damp When my eyes were stabbed By the flash of a neon light That split the night And touched the sound of silence And in the naked light I saw Ten thousand people, maybe more People talking without speaking People hearing without listening People writing songs That voices never share No wonders disturb the sounds of silence that I you do not know Silence like a cancer grows Yeah, my words that I might teach you Take my arms that I might reach you But my words like silent raindrops fell And echo in the world And the people bowed and prayed To the neon god they'd made And the sign flashed out its warning In the world that it was forming And the sign said the words of the prophets Are written on the subway walls And In the sound of silence <laughs> Thank you very much. That was beautiful, Jen. Did you like it? Thank you. My wife's looking at me with ill-disguised desire. The car's going wild. Everyone's saying wow, wow, wow. Thank you. Um, I, I really like the version by Disturbed. I think they do a remarkable version of the song. There's a full orchestra behind it. And, I mean, I would have liked to have done that, but I fear me I wouldn't have done it the justice that it deserves. So that was the sound of silence. Do you have any questions? No, but I'm just reminded that it is um, Pico's Pirate Bay. Of course. I was reminded by Judy H. and one of two others today that today is Speak Like a Pirate Day. And so I'm not going to sing the next song like a pirate, but I'll introduce it like a pirate. This song is called The Storm. And The Storm is about you'll be unsurprised to hear a storm. And I wrote it when I was living in the bush, there by Londolosi, not a lot of sea over... <coughs> I'm going to stop. <laughs> not a lot of sea over there, just landlubbers. And... <coughs> I wrote this one in the fire, which I sang last week, quite soon after each other. And this particular one, as the fire uh, was written after a fire, this storm song was written, yes, correct, after a storm. And in fact, it wasn't written after a storm, it was written during a storm. I was sitting outside of this, I was given this beautiful place to live, um, well, a number of beautiful places at Londolosi, but the first place I stayed when I was there was the kind of the owner's guest cottage. And 
It had a look out towards the west, and I watched the storm coming in from there on the veranda one afternoon, and this kind of came out of it. And it's just about the building of a storm. We had some lovely rain today, and that's about it, really. It's not anything more meaningful than that, so take from it what you will. I will be using the loop pedal on this one, and so hopefully, technically, we'll be fine. Rum. Rum what? Fergus yes. Like says, I need rum. Fergus says, I need rum. Thank you, Fergus. I'm going to drink some more Badger Mountain to wet my whistle. I also need the carcass of a bird stuck to my, uh, my, my shoulder. <laughs> Drums beat out a pulse Of an old and gentle land You came from nowhere to my mind's eye While the distant thunder rolled And I was waiting here for you The clouds gathered for the storm I felt the earth flinch As the lightning split the ground You came walking in the rain But your face was so warm Your image closer with each strike Floating careless on the night Can you feel me in the wake of the storm? The breaking of the heat and the breathing of the land. How long you've waited in the dark? The storm is raging all around. Of 
an old and gentle land You came from nowhere to my mind's eye While the distant thunder rolled. <laughs> thanks, thanks, my baby. Did you like that one, Kirsten? You've never heard it before, have you? No, you haven't. That was the storm, everybody. Hmm. I think so. That was all I had to say about that song, so if there are no questions, yeah, I'll move on. Oh, you do. Peter wants to know, what is your preferred genre of music? My preferred genre, Peter, really, as I think with most people, depends entirely on how I'm feeling at any particular time. So, uh, if I'm working, I often listen to some classical guitar. If I'm feeling like I need some inspiration, I sometimes listen to Beethoven or uh, his symphonies or his piano concertos, which I love. Uh, I sometimes listen to, if I'm feeling in a particular way, the Foo Fighters or Dave Matthews. Uh, if I'm feeling particularly nostalgic, Johnny Clegg or some folk music. So really, it does depend. Uh, on how I'm feeling. Lately, a lot of David Gilmour, basically, and Dave Matthews. David Gilmour, Dave Matthews, and actually uh, Julian Breen. Yes. Okay? Well, a lot of people are saying uh, John Denver, Peter Um John Denver I don't really listen to. Um, I, don't, I, I like him, but I, it's just not something I've ever really got into. Love Fleetwood Mac. Also makes me, it conjures a mood in me that is very, um, I, uh, one second. ethereal is the wrong word, nostalgically ethereal, I don't know, it makes me feel a satisfaction and connection with music, I don't know why, because they're such a totally dysfunctional bunch of human beings, but I, I, I love this stuff, I really do enjoy it. <laughs> Should do that song. I don't know the words though right now. Okay, so moving on. Shut up. Excuse me? No, it's this machine. Which I'm worried about it's the mile and of work. Oh. Uh, they can't burn, they're on they're sitting on a uh, an energy saver bulb. Okay. It's not hot. See I can touch it. She didn't see that. Okay, so the next song is one that is a very famous South African protest song. There's nothing funny about this song. It's called Weeping. And it was written in 1987, if I'm not mistaken, by a chap called Dan Haymans, who at the time was in the army. Now, South Africans, all white male South Africans, were conscripted to the army up until 1994. I was the last um, cohort to receive papers. I never went to the army. I was never going to go to the South African army. And uh, I think up until around 1990, 91, everyone had to go. And what it was, uh, was a, it was a conscription. At the time, there was a border war. But by 1987, I think those had all calmed down. And what in actual fact the army was used for was to quell uprisings. Apartheid was in its death throes. There was a lot of unrest in the township areas around the major centers of South Africa, and the army was sent in to deal with those, um, I suppose, well, the riots, basically. And Dan Haymans was, a, a, as far as I'm aware, he may still well be alive, I don't know where he is now, but he was a young Afrikaans guy, and obviously there was a huge culture about going to the army and serving your country, and the song is basically about the incredible disillusion he felt after he was sent into the townships to go and deal with an uprising, with a riot, and how basically being turned against his own people, his, own, his fellow South Africans, made him sick to his heart. And that's the song called Weeping. And what's so lovely about it was performed by a, a beautiful band called Bright Blue. And in the middle of it, they stuck the 
what is now our national anthem, but what was then a band song, and that's Mkosi Sikelele i Africa, which means God bless Africa. And it was a band song because it was considered a protest song, and they snuck it in. And f what was known then as Radio 5, which was the kind of progressive rock uh, radio station, they played the song, and they weren't allowed to play Mkosi Sikelele, but nobody from the apartheid machine seemed to notice that it had been snuck in in the middle of the song. And so I always just like that little story about it, and it's called Weeping. I knew a man who lived in fear It was huge, it was angry, it was drawing near Behind his house a secret place was the shadow of a demon he could never face. He built his walls of steel and flame, men with guns to keep it tame. Then standing back, he made it plain that the nightmare would never ever rise again. But the fear and the fire and the guns remain It doesn't matter now, it's over anyhow He tells the world that it's sleeping But as the night came round I heard its lonely sound It wasn't roaring, it was weeping It wasn't roaring, it was Sunshine, you said I should put that on my CD. It's a beautiful song, isn't it? It really is a. It's a good one. Um, I think I should probably look into doing that. 
Oh, good. Thank you for all the clap emojis. Now, while you clap emoji at me, I'm going to swap guitars. Okay. What? And while you do the thing. Oh, you want more wine? Yes, yes. Get thirsty. My wife has already finished her wine. Stand by. You're going to have to come here. I'm attached to the mixer. <laughs> That's disastrous. Right, there we go. Let me replace guitars. This guitar stand has a tendency to throw the guitars onto the ground, which is disconcerting. Right, um, Kirsten, may I prevail upon you to turn on the amplifier? You just need to push the switch closest to you. There you are. Okay, it's a lot of pressure. Okay, Done. right. Now, this song, this is a complicated song. Last week, I was asked, what are my sort of... Should be okay. Last week, I was asked, what song I am most proud of writing, I think. And this is definitely one of them, simply because it's harmonically quite complicated in the middle. I don't think it's lyrically particularly brilliant, but I, I think that musically it's, it's got a lot of different elements in it that I'm quite pleased came together. Whether you will think the same or not, I don't know. It's called The Deep Sea, I don't know why it's called the deep C, C as in K, it's in C major, maybe that's why. I, I can't tell you why I called it that. But it's about, it's about um, essentially the feeling you get when you realize that the extreme emotional discord and turmoil that you once felt really wasn't that bad and that whatever issue it was that you were feeling that way about wasn't that bad anyway, if you know what I mean. Now, in this particular case, it was a breakup that I'd been through, which took me a long time to get over. Totally inappropriate relationship, uh, not in terms of legality or uh, anything like that. It was inappropriate in that our personalities were not uh, uh, suited to each other like my wife's and mine are, absolutely. Yes. I think she agrees. She hasn't looked at me yet. And so this song is about that breakup. And in the middle, there's a kind of speaking bit. I hesitate to call it poetry because I think that's probably giving it a compliment it doesn't deserve. But there's some quite nice um, string arrangement underneath it that I'm quite proud of. I'm not so proud of the words, but I, I do really like the strings under it. And for the first time since we started these things, we're going to have a, a, a full band, a uh, full band with bass and drums and rhythm guitars etc and just in case you think the virtual drummer was programmed I did write I promise you every single hit stick hit that he makes I, I wrote so although he doesn't actually exist or she doesn't actually exist I did tell him or her exactly what to play I think that's important otherwise you might think I'm cheating all right is everything ready Plectrum in my pocket for the second part of the song. Good words, I can see them all. Okay, here we go. Hold on to your seats. Getting married today And the sun will shine on you Your pretty face turns away It's time to say my final farewell It's been so many years since you left me in the shade My heart confused and battered, a spirit free and unshackled 
My teeth were clenched, my feet were led My voice screamed at the winter sky I walked into the freezing dusk The flames you left dying with the day Stars wove a story I couldn't bring myself to read A tale as old as time The darkness came to claim me The night tore at my lungs A black void drank my life My eyes are still full But my heart's a little lighter The night is not so cold The stars smile from the ink Still you come to me in the cold of the night Where silence reigns and air is short The bats sweep through my mind The stars wove a story I couldn't bring myself to read A tale as old as time The darkness came to claim me The night tore at my lungs A black void drank my life Now listen here, you bitter man The hot wind too will fade and dust and sand that fills you will vanish with the rain. For I am the greening earth, and I was always here. Quiet down your screaming, and listen to my song. Yes, quiet down your screaming voice, and listen to my song. One day you will hear it, the gentle beating of the owl's wing, a whisper from forever, a sweet note hanging in the dew. Lie down by the river and hear the water's chorus of courage and of peace. The dawn begins to break. Courage and of peace, see, the dawn begins to break. Getting 
merry today And the sun will shine on you Your pretty face turns away It's time to say my final farewell Yes, yes, it's a long song, seven minutes. Lots of people are saying you wrote that. Yes, I did write that one. <coughs> I'm so pleased. Ooh, <coughs> the thunder is rolling oh, outside. <coughs> the thing I forgot to say about that song while I choke. <coughs> <Is it okay? coughs> yeah is that it's all about the healing of nature as well, of course, because I wrote it when I was in the bush. And it's about the river and the sounds of water and wind and the smell of dust and all that stuff and how amazingly healing it is. So that's what it's about. That's the deep sea. <coughs> I think I'm all right. I have a question for you. Yes. Cat 3 says, how many different guitars do you own? Oh, Cat 3, I've only got five guitars, Man. which I feel is, for a man of my age, it's a really small collection. I need more. I need lots more. Yes, I do. My wife disagrees. Off the top of my head, I'd like a Gretsch or two. I'd like a, um, a Les Paul. I'd like a Martin Acoustic. I'd like... Um, what else would I like? I probably, an, oh, I'd really like a nice, a brand new spanking Spanish classical guitar. That's just off the top of my head. I mean, there are lots of others. Manny wants to know <coughs> if that song is on SoundCloud. Yes, that song is on SoundCloud, Manny. You can find it there. If you go to my website, it's there as well, I think. Is it? If it isn't, I'll put it up tomorrow. It should be there. So that's the deep sea, and uh, I really like the guitar solo because it's pretty simple to play, and it's just, it kind of rocks along, you know? Okay, good. The final song of the evening. No. Oh, I know. It's not the only one. No, this is the final song. Yeah, you're going to do it Yes. Um, <clears throat> this one I sang when, <laughs> well, how, should, how to put this? This one I sang when, shall we say, the troubles began with my employment last year, um, when, unfortunately, the company I was work f working for, can you hear the thunder? I'm sure you can. Um, the company I was working for, unfortunately, had to retrench us all. This is the media business, that's how it works. And it was all about the amazing joy that I had working in the bush with many of you <coughs> watching every day. Uh, it's not my song. It's a song by a New York musician, actress, Broadway writer, amazing artist, Sarah Bareilles. And I think I said her name correctly. And it's called Safe Place to Land. And once I've sung it, I would strongly recommend you go and find it on YouTube with her and it's John Legend singing it. I mean, that guy's voice is something else, and to hear them, two of them together is just spectacular. Anyway, so this is Safe Place to Land, and I, I mean, I'd learnt it because it was just a beautiful song, and I felt like I'd had a safe place to land uh, with my job that I had in the bush. It was far alive. Okay. Now my wife is my safe place to land. She's smiling like this. She really is. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> uh, I just need to make sure I have the plectrum in the pocket because, again, I need to get it out halfway through the song. Okay, it's all good. <clears throat> you may play now. Good. We're going to start that again. I played the wrong chord to start. <coughs> Sorry about that.
When holding your breath is safer than breathing When letting go is safer than keeping When innocent words turn to lies And you can't hide by closing your eyes when pain is all that they offer Like a kiss from the lips of a monster You know the famine so well But never met the feast And home is the belly of the beast Oh, the ocean is wild and over your head and the boat beneath you is sinking Don't need room for your bags Hope is all that you have So say the Lord's Prayer twice Hold your babies tight Surely someone will reach out a hand And show you a safe place to land Oh, imagine yourself in a building Up in flames being told to stand still Oh, the windows wide open This is a leap on faith You don't know who'll catch you Maybe somebody will Oh, the ocean is wild and over your head and the boat beneath you is sinking Don't need room for your bags Hope is all that you have So say the Lord's Prayer twice Hold your babies tight Surely someone will reach out a hand And show you a safe place to land The ocean is wild and over your head And the boat beneath you is sinking Don't need room for your bags Hope is all that you have So say the Lord's Prayer twice Hold your babies tight Surely someone will reach out a hand and show you a safe place to land Be the hand of the hopeful stranger A little scared but you're strong enough Be the light of the dark in this danger Till the sun comes Be the hand of the hopeful stranger Little scared but you're strong enough Be the light of the dark in this danger Till the sun comes up Be the hand of the hopeful stranger a little scared, but you're 
but you're strong enough Be the light in the dark of this danger Till the sun comes up 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 Till the sun Thanks, my baby. Thank you very much. Did you get teary-eyed? Yeah. You look a little red in the eye. My wife doesn't cry, by the way. They only re she only cries in films, um, normally bad films. Um, that's all. Oh, and once at our wedding, which she saw she wouldn't. <laughs> all right. So I've got some questions for you before you do your encore. Yes. You know what's happening. Yes. Okay, first of all, um, Robin Page would like to know, did the neighbours know you are famous? Um, there are two aspects to that question. Rob and Paige, uh, one of my mothers-in-law and uh, my father-in-law, would like, and one of my fathers-in-law would like to know if um, <laughs> if the neighbours know I'm famous. First of all, I'm not really famous. I know that's how we sold our marriage to you. I'm going to come clean with you. I'm not that famous. Okay. Yeah, I thank you. My wife says uh, she thinks I'm famous. That's because she doesn't want to, her parents to know otherwise. And uh, do the neighbours complain? They haven't yet. I do worry about it. I've got a special mute on the guitar amp, so although it's quite loud in my ear and online, it's relatively quiet here. I'll tell you, it's a complicated uh, way of making the mute. It's a box with a cushion in it, and then I've shoved that up against the... Uh, Couch, the sofa. If I say couch, my mother will have a heart attack. Sofa, mum, sorry. And that mutes the sound. So I don't think they can hear. It's nothing like as loud outside as it is in my ear or hopefully in your ears. Thus far, no complaints. Everyone is saying they reckon you're famous. Go ahead, fill me up. Well, many of you are saying you reckon I'm famous. Well, you're here. Thank okay. you very much for being here and making me feel famous. A more important question. Yes. Your Kirsten's, yes. as in of the ones that we've played. No, no, no. Of course, I get to choose two songs to play. All right. Do you know "Hit Me, Baby, One More Time" by Britney? I don't know "Hit Me, Baby, One More Time" by Britney Spears. And then that's one. That's you want me to play that. Yeah. You want me to play Britney Spears' and "Hit then, Me, Baby, One More Time." And then I'm yeah. A genie in a bottle by Christina Aguilera. I am a genie in a bottle by Christina Aguilera. Yeah. No, I, I won't play that song. Oh, I, I flatly refuse. Also, I mean, Christina's voice is really fairly unsurpassed. Okay, now we're going to play an encore. Um, I was going to play one of my own songs. Um, and my father said to me yesterday, he said, are you playing any Johnny Clegg this week? And I said, no, I'm not. And he sounded so bereft and disappointed that I could not not play a Johnny Clegg song. So dad, this one is for you. He also, <laughs> despite all the credit that I have given him over the course of these weeks that we've been together on Saturday evenings, he um, pointed out that I had never explained that he taught me the claw hammer, which is the following. An extremely useful sort of folk technique, I suppose, of plucking, where the thumb does the bass, ding, 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 and the other fingers are left to do what they like. And in fact, my father did teach me that about three weeks into my guitar career as a 13-year-old, and he played Don't Think Twice, It's All Right for me with the claw hammer. There you go, Dad. Thank you. Okay, so the next song is a very gentle, short little song called Tulam Tuanami, which means Be Quiet, My Child. 
It's a little sort of lullaby that you can imagine somebody singing to a child, probably in the, in the day actually, who won't settle. And it goes, Oh, Tulam Twanam, Umama Uzofiga Uzopate Lama Suiti. Mother, shh, child, shh, cease your crying. Your mother is going to arrive very shortly and she will bear sweets. And um, hopefully this mollified the child. It's over. Well, I'm afraid that's all the songs I know, unless I start repeating. Can we do two encores if there is next week? There is next week, but it will be in the bush. And I can't clap aloud. No, you can't clap aloud, and also, poor old David can't come with me. This is David, by the way. A lot of people name their guitars after women. I have named mine after men. Uh, this is David. This is Larry, who I'm playing. And um, I've got Eric. Uh, I've got one unnamed guitar which I gave to my brother to use, and um, my t I forgot my, oh, my twelve strings name is John. There you go. And the next one is. Kirsten. And my next one's name's going to be Kirsten. Kirsten. Yes. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. We will see you at uh, in the bush next week, and my wife will be virtually with us all. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>